Hi guys, episode 36, 36. Nixon, the United States is today the country that assumes the destiny of man. For the first time, a country has become the world's leaders without achieving this through conquest. And it's strange to think that after thousands of years, one single country has found power while seeking only justice. 1962, when Kennedy was elected. 61 is when Kennedy was elected. 70s, that's what everybody had in the kitchen on their wallpaper in the kitchen. This is it. 70s. Vietnamization, Nixon and the Vietnam War. Nixon gained support for his Vietnam War exit strategy, including Vietnamization, passing the burden over to the Vietnamese, the South Vietnamese, instead of our soldiers. Doesn't really go that way. But the disclosure of his secret plans to escalate the war further divided Americans. Enraged doves and uh, proved ineffective in helping the U.S. win this war. Doves opposed the Vietnam War, staged massive dem demonstrations demanding an immediate withdrawal of troops. He said he wanted peace with honor. That's what he claimed in his election. Uh, to try to be elected was peace with honor. And then that people took that meaning he's going to take us out of war, and then he didn't. Vietnam, I, what a mess. What a mess. I can't even. Hawk supported the war and argued withdrawing troops equals defeat. They wanted to stay there. That's literally what we all looked like in the 70s. Nixon believed the silent majority of Americans were moderate, mainstream people who quietly supported his policies like peace with honor. Silent majority. Uh, in the video, you saw them as the hard hats who went in and beat up those peace protesters. And then this is what we were talking about, the Ho Chi Minh Trail, which was basically in Laos and Cambodia and provided an opportunity for the North Vietnamese to go and invade South Vietnam, but to get there gently through Laos and Cambodia. Nixon ended the draft and adopted a policy of Viet Vietnamization, the training of South Vietnamese troops to allow for the slow withdrawal of US troops. And yet we didn't really slowly withdraw. It is just a matter of changing the color of the bodies. If this boy of yours is real, how come we gotta wind him up all the time? In April 1970, Nixon ordered an invasion of neutral Cambodia, hoping to destroy the Viet Cong bases and the Ho Chi Minh Trail. That is absolutely understandable. I showed you uh, in that last picture that the Ho Chi Minh Trail allowed all of them to get from North Vietnam pretty gently to invade South Vietnam. There you go, the Ho Chi Minh Trail, they came through here. The invasion of Cambodia represented an escalation of the Vietnam War and it was done secretly without congressional knowledge. 350 college campuses across the country erupted after we started bombing Cambodia. Um, in the essay, again, you have to tell me about anti-war protests uh, when Nixon was president for the third essay question. This escalation of war led to massive student protests, 1.5 million students and a shutdown of 1,200 campuses. The last time that we've had campuses shut down was this in 1970 and 71, and then now from the pandemic. That's the last time college campuses were shut down. And then horrible, horrible, horrible atrocities in, in Kent State. May of 1974, college students were killed by the National Guard at Kent State in Ohio. That was after they bombed, somebody bombed the ROTC building. So they sent in the National Guard troops, but then for whatever reason, they opened fire. They literally opened fire on students. Students with book bags. This one was killed. She's one of the four people killed. They were at college. They were killed. Um, Crosby, Sil Crosby, Seal, and Nash. What is it? Oh, Crosby, Sills. Sills and Nash. Um, four dead in Ohio. The firing stopped. I lay there maybe 10 or 15 seconds. I got up. I saw four or five students lying around the lot. By this time, it was like mass hysteria. Students were crying. They were screaming for ambulances. I heard some girls screaming. They didn't have blanks. They didn't have blanks. No, they didn't. In other words, they thought at first that they were shooting blanks at them to scare them, and it wasn't blanks. They killed people. The Pentagon Papers. In 1971, the New York Times, Daniel Ellsberg's Pentagon Papers detailed a secret government study into the origins of the Vietnam War. Americans were furious because it's not what we were told. The Pentagon Papers. 
The Pentagon Papers demonstrated, among other things, that the Johnson administration had system systematically lied, not only to the public, but also to Congress, about a subject of transcendental national interest and significance, that whatever he was telling us was not actually the truth. LBJ. In 1971, Congress repealed the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution that had given uh, the president, to, president, president unprecedented war powers. They repealed that. In 1971, the voting age was lowered to 18 from 21 by the 26th Amendment, uh, especially so soldiers could vote. So in 1971, before 1971, 1965, all the way through 1971, if you were 18 years old, you could go fight in war, be drafted to fight in war, but you couldn't vote for the leaders that were drafting you and sending you to war. That's a crying shame. That's crazy. In Vietnam, in January 1973, the Treaty of Paris ended the American involvement in the war. Vietnam was still divided. 1973. We finally, finally, finally are going to leave in 1973. And in the next year and a half, uh, North Vietnam goes ahead and takes over South Vietnam. And what was it all for? What was it for? Nobody really can explain. It didn't accomplish a lot except 58,000 Americans were killed. Many, many, many wounded. Many PTSD. It's just terrible, it's terrible. Proxy war, the proxy war, part of the Cold War. In 1973, Congress passed the War Powers Act, mandating that the president inform Congress within 48 hours if US troops are sent into a combat without a declaration of war to prevent what LBJ did. And then in 1975, North Vietnam attacked and defeated South Vietnam. Vietnam became a unified communist country. This is in Saigon and people are trying to escape before uh, Saigon is getting overrun from the U.S. consulate. <coughs> the Vietnam War cost $150 billion, killed 60,000 Americans, and had over 300,000 casualties of war. Honestly, just awful. If only the war on poverty was a real war, then we'd actually be putting money into it. The U.S. could not afford both the war and Johnson's Great Society, leading to the high inflation rates of the late 60s and 70s, so the foreign policy was dragging down his Great Society programs, LBJ's choice of Great Society programs. The war increased public skepticism toward international involvement and a strong distrust of the U.S. government. We already distrusted the government as a result of Vietnam, and now we're going to have Watergate. Presidents in Vietnam. Ike is on here, but Ike didn't have a lot of, of involvement. Neither did Kennedy. Nixon in the world. Nixon presided over an era of detente and easing of Cold War tensions to improve relations with both the Soviet Union and China. He goes there. He goes to both countries. It's pretty impressive. The U.S. and communist countries had been locked in the Cold War since the end of World War II in 1946. That's Kissinger. Ch uh, this is Henry Kissinger. China, Japan, and Western Europe would all take an increased role replacing the bipolar U.S.-Soviet system. So instead of just two Cold War powers, he's trying to increase it so that everybody's more involved. Nixon and Kissinger sought a new international order based on multipolarity rather than just two major countries, and it doesn't happen. They also pursued a policy of detente with the USSR and China because containment had drained American resources, especially that, and faith in our government. It is not my belief that the way to peace is by giving up our friends or letting down our allies. On the contrary, our aim is to place America's international commitments on a sustainable, long-term basis to encourage local and regional initiatives to foster national independence and self-sufficiency, and by so doing to strengthen the total fabric of peace. Nixon. The Nixon Doctrine held that the U.S. would provide aid to third world nations but they would be responsible for their own defense, that our military is not going to go and protect them. So we will aid third world nations. Uh, first world is the United States. Second world is communism. Third world are everybody that are not either of the first or second world countries. A lot of Africa, a lot of Latin America. China and the USSR clashed over their shared border and their different interpretations of Marxism. Nixon seized the opportunity to relax tensions. He's trying to... Uh, put the China, the Soviets, and China against each other because they're both communist, and he's trying to pit them against each other. Growing dissidence between the Soviet Union and China 
has limited both countries in the pursuit of policies basically antagonistic to U.S. interests. Uh, Nixon goes to China. In 1971, Nixon stunned the world by announcing he intended to visit China to normalize relation between the two nations. This is when we finally stopped talking to Taiwan, little ti tiny Taiwan acting like it's China instead of the People's Republic of China, which is like a billion people with Mao Zedong. That's Mao Zedong and Nixon. Nixon visited China, showing a dramatic example of detente, the easing of tensions. You have to know detente. Uh, in the very, very beginning, JFK was trying to do detente, and then he was assassinated. Nixon nails detente. I think it's fabulous. He was trying to calm Cold War tensions. There was uh, ping pong diplomacy. We had Americans go and play against the Chinese in this ping pong diplomacy. And then we had panda diplomacy. I think that the Chinese sent two pandas to our zoo. Three months later, Nixon became the first president to visit Moscow, and this is Brezhnev. The issue of war and peace cannot be solved unless we in the United States and Soviet Union demonstrate both the will and the capacity to put our relationship on a basis consistent with the aspirations of mankind. Nixon. He could have gone down as one of the best presidents of all time, and then he shot himself in the foot with Watergate. Nixon's visit led to a series of agreements with Soviet Union that eased tensions and expanded trade. The strategic arms talks limited the number of intercontinental missiles that were trying to get rid of missiles instead of building them up. What up, Elvis? Nixon at home. He's incredibly liberal compared to what you think of most Republicans now. It's a very liberal policies. Nixon, like most Republicans, favored empowering state and local governments but his new federalism, remember the Great Society um, and the New Frontier was JFK, Great Society was LBJ, uh, New Federalism is the name of his domestic program, offered a fairly liberal domestic agenda for income, uh, America. Go Nixon. Economic growth of the 50s and 60s ended with the stagnation of the 70s. The 70s was a very, very depressed economy. Not the depression, but it was a depressed economy. Nixon's new federalism called for distributing a portion of federal power to state and local governments. He urged revenue sharing. State and local governments could spend their federal dollars however they saw fit, that he wasn't going to micromanage what every state did with the federal dollars they were given. Nixon proposed a family assistance plan guaranteeing a minimum income for all families. It was never passed in Congress, but that's a basic universal income, just like Andrew Yang proposed this year in a Democratic primary. So the family assistance plan was just like Andrew Yang proposed, but he's a Republican. What I am proposing is that the federal government build a foundation under the income of every American family that cannot care for itself and wherever in America that family may live to help them. 1969, 1969. Uh, 50 years later, 40, 50 years later, Andrew Yang proposed the same thing. Nixon expanded great society programs like Medicare and Medicaid. He's expanding those programs, which now is unheard of in the Republican Party. There's no way. That's definitely a Democratic thing. Uh, poor families, homeless families. Nixon created aid to families with dependent children. That still exists to help people that were struggling. SSI, that's the people that have physical or mental disabilities and are incapable of working uh, to make sure that they're not homeless. Nixon created the Supplemental Security Income for Ill Senior Citizens and Disabled People. Nixon raised Social Security payments for the elderly. They were pretty low, so he raised those Social Security payments for parents or for grandparents to create goals and timetables for hiring black workers. Sorry. Nixon's Philadelphia plan required companies working for the federal government to create goals and timetables for hiring black workers. So um, trying to hire more black people. Most of you know it is called affirmative action. Uh, in far too many ways, American Negroes have been another nation deprived of freedom, crippled by hatred, the doors of opportunity closed to hope, but freedom is not enough. You do not wipe away the scars of centuries by saying, now you are free to go where you want. You do not take a person who for years has been hobbled by chains and liberate him, bring him up to the starting line of a race, and then say you are free to compete with all the others and still justly believe that you have been completely fair. 
This is the next and the more profound stage of the battle for civil rights. We seek opportunity, but to this end, equal opportunity is essential, but not enough, not enough. That affirmative action gives black people a better chance of being able to be competing on an equal footing with white people. Nixon supported affirmative action to help African Americans and women compete in an unfair society that was biased toward white men. Nixon supported the creation of the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA. Now keep in mind, during the 50s and 60s, with all of that massive industrialization after World War II, our factories were thriving, but they had black smoke and soot and uh, waste into the rivers and everything else. There was very few people that were trying to make sure that we were protecting the environment. And then Nixon decided that we should be protecting our environment. OSHA for safety. Nixon created the Occupational Health and Safety Administration, which says that you have to work more carefully in factories or make your factories safer for people, for employees. Nixon endorsed the Clean Air Act and Endangered Species Act. So this is really, really standard. Like Pittsburgh was one of the worst places. Remember that's coal and it's absolutely horrible pollution. Um, in LA, there was just a fog of pollution over LA all the time. Nixon removed US from the gold standard, but his policies did little to improve the economy. A lot of people, especially on the right, were not comfortable with us being taken off the gold standard. Supreme Court and social reform. The Supreme Court continued its judicial activist role in the 1970s, promoting habeas corpus rights, social reform, and a generally liberal agenda in the Supreme Court. That person is Chief Justice Earl Warren, had actively promoted social reform. Chief Justice Earl Warren is the one that wrote the opinion for Brown versus Board of Education. Nixon and the silent majority reacted negatively to many of these decisions. So uh, Nixon was not okay with how the Supreme Court was ruling. The silent majority, the hard hats from our video. Anti-war protesters, anti-anti-war protesters. In 1962, Baker versus Carr, the principle of one man, one vote allowed judges to review cases of redistricting because people would draw districts. They still do. They still do. It's called gerrymandering, drawing districts however they want so that they have a more favorable outcome for their party. That's literally me in the fifth grade. In 1962, Engel versus Vitale argued against mandatory prayer and reading the Bible in public school. Separation of church and state. Gideon versus Wainwright in 1963 asserted that all criminals were entitled to legal counsel even if they could not afford it. You know, that's going to be combined with Miranda rights. In 1965, Griswold versus Connecticut protected a woman's right to privacy in validating state laws prohibiting contraceptives. Are you in the mood to exercise our constitutional rights? <laughs> Weak. And then Miranda. In 1966, Miranda versus Arizona established the Miranda rights for defendants. They must be made aware of their rights. You know this, I do here swear by, hereby swear that I make this statement voluntarily and of my own free will with no threats, coercion, or promises of immunity and with full knowledge of my legal rights, understanding any statement I make may be used against me. So they, they made him unfairly say that without any Miranda rights. Miranda writes, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to have an attorney present during questioning. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you. Miranda writes, um, he had apparently killed a teenage girl. In 1973, Roe v. Wade protects abortion rights for women with their right to privacy. Um, now with... Uh, Amy Coney Barrett, that might be back on the docket again, that we might see that overturned in the next four years, if not sooner. When women are compelled to carry and bear children, they are subjected to involuntary servitude in violation of the 13th Amendment. Even if this, the woman has stipulated to have consented to the risk of pregnancy, that does not permit the state to force her to remain pregnant. Right of privacy, whether it be found in the 14th Amendment's concept of personal liberty and restrictions upon state action, as we feel it is, or as the district court determined in the 9th Amendment's reservations of right to the people, is broad enough to encompass a woman's decision whether or not to, to terminate her pregnancy. 
This is what they called activist judges in the Supreme Court. But here's through the years, from 1970, how far apart we've come and then how close together we came during Reagan, and then apart and then together again and now apart again. And that's really apart now in 2020. But the court remained focused on social reform through the 70s. <coughs> Our chief justices have probably had more profound and lasting influence on their times and the direction of the nation than most presidents. Hoping to create a more conservative court, Nixon replaced the retiring Earl Warren with Warren Berger, Berger, a more conservative justice, and then Watergate. Nixon wanted to become Richard the Great. He wanted nothing short of world peace and a prosperous, happy America. He was brought down by his own hubris, by his own actions, by his own character. Watergate became the greatest political scandal in American history, leading to the downfall of Nixon, exposing the risks of an imperial presidency. He was going to win. He was going to win re-election, no problem. That's why it's so crazy. Like, he literally had no issues about re winning re-election. George McGovern was who he ran against, and that was the result. That was the result. Nixon won in a landslide with 96% of the electoral vote. He was going to win. What are you doing, man? You had it. Nixon was a master politician, but he was paranoid about political rivals, his popularity, and the loss of power. Politics would be a hell of a good business if it weren't for the freaking people. This is the Watergate Hotel, by the way. This is the Watergate Hotel. And that's where the Democratic National Committee headquarters were. On June 17, 1972, five men working for Republican Committee for the re-election of the president, it literally is creep is the acronym, were caught breaking into the Democratic National Committee offices at the Watergate Hotel and placing bugs in the room so they could listen in on all the strategies. These are the five guys, they were called the plumbers. And there's the recording devices that they had in the room, the bugs that they placed in the room to be able to overhear. They're hoping to spy on the Democrats during the election of 72, which was just not needed given Nixon's anticipated and actual landslide victory. He had a 70% approval rating, which is virtually unheard of in politics. 70% going into re-election, and he still did this. It's nuts. He, should, he shouldn't have done it. There was no reason, no reason to. But he was paranoid. These are all the guys, all the prison sentences. G. Gordon Liddy, four and a half years in prison. Jed Magruder, seven months in prison. John Mitchell, 19 months in prison. John Dean, four months in jail and disbarred, meaning he lost his law degree, law license. Nixon probably participated in the administration's effort to cover up the, cover up the incident by interfering with federal investigations by improperly using both the FBI and CIA as his own people against the Democrats. I can say categorically that no one in the White House staff, no one in this administration presently employed was involved in this very bizarre incident. Except me. Except me. I was involved. Oh, Rich, Richard Nixon. His name was Dick Nixon. They called him Dick. My brother's name was Richard, and my father called him Dick, and he hated it. But Dick Nixon is what he went by. He didn't go by Richard Nixon. Dick Nixon. Uh, they called him Tricky Dick as a result of this investigation. Congress launched an investigation, and many prominent members of the Nixon administration had to resign. And then all the president men, uh, Carl Bernstein and Bob Woodward in the Washington Post, are the ones that basically broke this out. Um, this guy was named Deep Throat. It was their source. He was their secret source. We don't find this out for like 20 or 30 years that Mark felt the associate director of the FBI was Deep Throat. That's what he was called. And there's a movie. I'm going to watch it this weekend. It's called All the President's Men. <coughs> and it's about Watergate. <coughs> Excuse me. Maybe the single greatest reporting effort of all time. Also, uh, Bob Woodward has just interviewed Trump and has a book coming out about Trump that made Trump look bad in a couple of instances. We had tape recorders. That's what a tape recorder looked like. Tapes were discovered of conversations which would solve the mystery of this case. 
Mixon claimed executive privilege and refused to release the tapes. If I were to make public these tapes containing blunt and candid remarks on many different subjects, the confidentiality of the office of the president would always be suspect. Spiro Agnew resigned due to tax evasion, bribery, and extortion. He was replaced by Gerald Ford. Extortion means that he was like holding a secret over somebody's head and making them pay money for him not to release that secret. Doesn't make sense. Uh, after Agnew resigns, Ford becomes vice president. After Nixon resigns, Ford becomes president, making him the only person in American history that became president but was never elected by the population. He doesn't win re-election. Jimmy Carter beats him. In April 74, the House Judiciary Committee uh, recommended three articles of impeachment against Nixon. And they, uh, July 74, U.S. versus Nixon, the Supreme Court ordered Nixon to release the tapes. I'll tell you what, you define an impeachable offense and then I'll define executive privilege. August 5th, my 12th birthday, 1974, Nixon finally released three tapes that contained most of the information. However, parts of the tape were blank. <coughs> Sorry, sorry, sorry. I don't give a what happens. I want you all to stonewall it. Let them plead the Fifth Amendment cover up or anything else. If, it, if it'll save it, save the plan. Then the secretary, this is great. The buttons on it said on and off, forward and backward. I caught on to that fairly fast. I don't think I'm so stupid as to erase what's on a tape. One of the tapes was missing 18 minutes, 18 critical minutes of recordings. Rosemary Woods, Nixon's secretary, said she accidentally deleted that section when she bumped the recorder while reaching for the phone. And that's what happened to 18 minutes of tapes, according to her. August 9th, I hereby resign the Office of President of the United States. And this is Nixon flying away after he resigned. On August 8th, Nixon resigned, realizing the Senate would almost certainly find him guilty. August 8th, 1974, 24 months after the scandal started, he has to resign as president. He would have been president all the way through 1976. But now Gerald Ford. Peace.